Good morning, and thank you all for being here for the DAO's regular Monday morning press conference. We are delighted once again to be at the Sheriff's Office for the purpose of doing more work around fugitives and bringing them to justice. Since we began the process in a collaboration with PPD and also with the Sheriff's Office of using several of these press conferences for the purpose of making sure the public has the information they need so that they can assist in bringing fugitives to justice, we have seen, from what I understand, over 10 people that we lifted up uh, be apprehended, either turn themselves in for whatever reason, I'll let you figure that one out, or uh, actually be turned in by other people. In this holiday season, there is no question that this is a pretty good time to catch people who are on the run because they tend to come to familiar places, they tend to want to be around familiar faces. And so uh, we think this is a good time to lift up an additional group, about 12 or 13 uh, fugitives who need to be brought to justice. Let me, if I may, start out, however, by saying that uh, many of us have been very concerned all weekend with the situation that occurred in relation to some Philadelphia police officers being shot during the apprehension of a civilian. While it would be inappropriate for us to get into the names of the individuals or the details of their physical condition, their medical situation, I can tell you that we have been working on it very intensively. This is a very active investigation. We are hopeful about the condition of these officers, um, which seems to be going in a, a positive direction, thank goodness. Uh, and therefore, as we continue our investigation, and as we work with PPD, among others, on this investigation, we will have more information in the future. I can also tell you that the DAO's Victim Support Services Division will be reaching out to the officers, their colleagues, and their chain of command to extend victim support and services to those impacted, as we always do when it comes to the injury or shooting of a police officer. Uh, we do understand how difficult it is for police to get up every day, put on the uniform or put on whatever guard they have that day to do their work, and to know that there's a chance that they may be injured or possibly even killed before the end of the, end of the day. This is a tragic reminder that that is something that happens. It is totally unacceptable to the Philadelphia DA's office. I know that it is totally unacceptable to the sheriff um, and we will be doing everything we can to make sure this investigation is solid and to make sure that all of the facts are found so that we can do what we need to do in relation to this case. Our special investigation unit is charged with going to the location of a shooting of this type shortly after it happens. Uh, that of course did occur despite the hour. Um, that was done actually by our special investigations unit and due to the nature of the investigation, while we will not have further comment at this time, we just want to let you know that that is definitely very present. It's a big chunk of our work right now and it's very present on our minds. All right, so um, before we get to these most wanted fugitives who are all fugitives for homicides and shooting, I'd like to acknowledge some of the good people here. We have the Honorable Carolyn Engel Temin and Robert Listenby, both first assistants in the Philadelphia DA's office. Sheriff Rochelle Bilal, a great ally of our office with whom we've had some excellent collaborations is here and we're grateful to be hosted in the offices of the Sheriff. We have Lieutenant Hamilton Marshmond of the Homicide Unit who has been here before from the Philadelphia Police Department and Lieutenant Marshmond along with ADA Joanne Pescator, who is the Chief of our Homicide Non-Fatal Shootings Unit will be speaking shortly to announce this new group of fugitives that we are lifting up so that we can bring them in. We will also, of course, be hearing from Sheriff Bilal after they speak. We have with us Andrea Rivera, who is a peer crisis responder, responder excuse me, from the DAO's Pairs Unit. Joseph Smiley is here, also a peer crisis responder for the DAO's Cares Unit, which as you know, provides intensive services uh, a unit started during this administration with grant funding that provides intensive services to the families uh, that have suffered a loss by way of homicide. And they do so uh, intensively for the first 45 days after a killing. All right, 
in terms of the numbers, let's do those for a moment. The number of homicides year to date, 394. That is 92 fewer than on this day last year when it was 486. It is 131, if my math is right. 133, I'm sorry. It is 133 fewer than two years ago. 133 fewer. This is a 19% reduction over last year. Last year was an 8% reduction over the year before. A reminder that we are currently in the United States experiencing what criminologists expect to be the biggest decrease in homicides since there was a recording of data about homicides. The biggest decrease in the history of the United States in homicides. As of several months ago, well, a few months ago, that looked like a 12% reduction among the 90 largest cities. I said Philly is down 19%. So by all indications, even in this banner year of improvement, uh, what we are seeing is that Philadelphia is getting better faster than the average of these other cities. This last week was not as great. This last week, there were seven homicides and nine non-fatal shootings. Seven is obviously less than the approximately 10 and a half a week that we experienced during the pandemic, but it's also more than we saw a couple weeks ago when we were at three. <clears throat> For the period December the 1st through December the 7th, there were 122 gun or gun violence incidents, meaning cases in which someone either illegally possessed a gun or committed another crime with that gun. Of those 122 incidents, police made 60 arrests. Of the 60 arrests that were brought to my office by police, we opened 60 cases. Uh, simply put, the bail set failed us again, as they always do, because that is actually what cash bail does. It lets people who have resources and do terrible things out, and it keeps people who have no resources and do things that are not serious, keeps them in at taxpayer expense. Uh, until this legislature actually wants to do something about public safety, I'm afraid we will be stuck with a cash bail system that is a mess. It is now my pleasure to introduce Andrea Rivera, peer crisis responder from the DAO CARES units, who will provide an update report regarding the work of the DAO's Victim Support Services Division. Uh, I think she will also be joined by Mr. Joseph Smiley. Dear President. Go. Good morning, everyone. My name is Andrea Rivera, and I am the bilingual crisis responder for the CARES program. My job is to reach out to the families that have been affected by homicide and offer them support services. I joined the CARES program because I, too, lost a loved one to homicide and wanted to continue to provide support services to the families that are experiencing what I have been through. I want to start off by giving my deepest condolences to everyone and to all the families who, has, who have lost a loved one to homicide, my heart is with you. Last week, during the days of 12-2 and 12-8-2023, the CARES responded to 10 families, providing 30 different services to those families. Out of the 10 families, we contacted four families via telephone, five families were met on the scene and one family was met at the hospital and that was for the family of Mr. Eric Harrison who was fatally stabbed at his place of employment. We met his family at Jefferson Hospital and um, those responders were Mr. Joseph Smiley and myself. I did speak with Mr. Harrison's mother, Ms. Fobbs, just this morning just to check in on her and she provided, she texted me a brief statement that she would like for me to read to the public. Ms. Fobbs, which is Mr. Eric Harris's mother, stated, I would like to thank everyone for all their prayers and support and heartfelt wishes for my son, Eric. Thank you. Thank you for that report. Um, so I already messed up. I forgot to introduce under Sheriff uh, Tariq El Shabazz, who is here with us today. Thank you, Under Sheriff. All right, so at this time, I'm going to ask ADA Joanne Pescator, whose idea this was, along with Lieutenant Hamilton Marshmont, whose idea this was, 
to have a public announcement of some of the most wanted fugitives for the purpose of trying to bring them to justice. So far, it's been very successful. There are 13 new names today. There's just one I want to mention to you before we get into the details. Every one of them has obviously uh, been involved in a terrible crime, and every victim lost is an incredibly important victim. Uh, there is no hierarchy here of human value. There, it is all value when it comes to people whose lives are lost. But I do want to point out that one of the names you will hear, Andre Goff, G-O-F-F, -F, is alleged to have killed Theo James IV. Some of you may remember Theo James IV. He was present as a witness during the mass shooting that occurred on July the 3rd. He actually was involved in scooping up some people who were harmed during that mass shooting. I actually met him along with G. Lamar Stewart, our chief of community outreach on July the 4th, when we were at the crime scene there, which of course covered quite a bit of distance. Uh, and he was out and we spoke to him. Well, I just want you to know that that is another life lost. And based on our information, it's lost because of Andre Goff. And we would like to see Mr. Goff brought to justice, just as we would like to see the other 12 names that you're about to hear all brought to justice. And with, without further ado, um, I just want to ask that ADA Pescator and also Lieutenant Marshmont come forward to explain the details with reference to these most wanted fugitives. And after that, we will go to Q&A. Thank you, DA Krasner. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant Marshmont, for all your help with this. Uh, so we have 12 names here today. The first two are from South Division, uh, any place in South Philadelphia is where those particular crimes happened. The 10 after that are all from Southwest Division, uh, Southwest and West Philadelphia. Some of these are repeats because we have done Southwest before. However, they have not been captured. That's why we're redoing them again. The first person that we're going to highlight is Jacques Houston. Uh, Mr. Houston uh, killed his stepfather on March 9th of 2023 in the 17th Police District at 1500 South Dover Street. Uh, the victim was shot numerous times. A warrant was gotten uh, for Mr. Houston on March 10th of 2023. Next, Gary Yeiser. Gary Yeiser killed Larry Everett. It was actually a delayed death. It was a beating case, not a shooting. August 28th of 2023, in the area of 2100 Dickinson Street here in Philadelphia. There's actually video of this incident. Uh, Mr. Ye Mr. Everett succumbed to his injuries approximately a week later. There was an arrest warrant gotten for Gary Yeiser on September 14th of 2023. The next person is Gustavo Caselas. Mr. Caselas, we did highlight before because this incident happened on February 3rd of 2022. This is also not a shooting case. It was a stabbing that happened at 6420 Doral Street in Philadelphia. Uh, the victim that was stabbed was Elidio Rosales. Uh, there was a warrant gotten for uh, Mr. Casales on June 7th of 2022. The next person is Basir Gillette. We highlighted this person as well because this warrant has been outstanding for over two years. Uh, Mr. Gillette shot and killed Kwamir Mitchell and a relative Wasim Mitchell was injured. He was 13 years old. This happened at a playground on May 13th of 2021 at 5600 Grays Avenue. A, an arrest warrant was gotten for Basile Gillette on June 4th of 2021. <coughs> Next is Andre Goff, which the DA just spoke about. Uh, Mr. Goff is alleged to have killed Theo C. James on September 23rd of 2023 at 5217 Chester Avenue. Uh, the victim was shot multiple times while on that corner. An arrest warrant was gotten for Mr. Goff on November 29th of 2023. Next 
next, Jermaine Powell. We've highlighted Mr. Powell before. Mr. Powell is alleged to have killed Quintation Minor, also known as Oral Bately, on May 13th of 2023 at 50, 5,000 block of Haverford Avenue. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bailey succumbed to his injuries on that day. There was a co-defendant also in this case who's already been arrested. A warrant was gotten for Mr. Powell on June 16th of 2023. We've highlighted this gentleman before as well. Safidin Sabir. This incident uh, was the shooting death of Ryan Moultrie. This happened outside of Sable's Showbox Bar on August 11th of 2019. This case is four years old. Uh, Mr. Moultrie was shot numerous times outside of that location. And the location was 3987 Ford Road here in Philadelphia. An arrest warrant was gotten for Mr. Sabir in October of 2019. Next is Kyle Smith. Kyle Smith is wanted for the shooting and killing of Philip Wise on September 22nd, 2021 at 56 and Osage Avenue here in Philadelphia. There was in fact a co-defendant in this case, Sean Williams, who was arrested in Florida and who's already been held for court. Kyle Smith is wanted and an arrest warrant was gotten for him in September of 2021. Nathaniel Thomas. Nathaniel Thomas um, has an arrest warrant for the shooting and killing of Terrence Jamar Matthews on September 11th of 2022 at 6100 Baltimore Avenue here in Philadelphia. The victim was shot while inside of a vehicle. An arrest warrant was gotten for Mr. Thomas on September 21st of 2022. Donald Whittingham. We've absolutely highlighted this person before. Mr. Whittingham is wanted for the shooting and killing of Kylief Myrick. That happened on February 18th of 2021 at 2900 South 70th Street here in Philadelphia. The victim was shot numerous times and succumbed to his injuries. There was a, an arrest warrant gotten for Mr. Whittingham on February 26th of 2021. Next is Malik Williams. Mr. Williams um, is accused of shooting and killing Nahir Sylvester on Friday, June 17th of 2022 at 640 Brooklyn Street here in Philadelphia. Mr. Sylvester was uh, shot numerous times and pronounced dead at that location. On June 30th of 2022, an arrest warrant was gotten for Malik Williams. And lastly, Anthony Young. Mr. Young is uh, wanted for the um, a arrest um, in the shooting of Terrell Lubin on October 17th of 2023. So this is a newer case. Uh, that happened at 510 North 57th Street uh, where Mr. Lubin was shot numerous times. An arrest warrant was gotten on October 17th of 2023. And Mr. Young does have a prior um, arrest and conviction for homicide. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I just want to take a few minutes uh, during this holiday season. You know, we're going to we're going to gather and we're going to be around our family and friends, and, and we're going to enjoy the holiday season. But there's going to be families that have lost someone and had someone killed that will not be able to enjoy the holiday season. And for some of these fugitives, they've been on the run for years. And these families have had to endure this hurt and pain for years. So, you know, I thank uh, Chief Pescator for coming up with this project because it's important to the families to know that we continue to investigate the homicide cases and we are continuing to do the best we can to apprehend these fugitives. But we do need the help from the public. We, we do need the help 
from the citizens to do the right thing and to contact us. The information and different videos from different investigations are also posted on the Philadelphia Police Department's YouTube channel. If anyone has information, they can dial 215-686-TIPS. That's 215-686-8477. Or you can contact the United States Marshal Service with information for any fugitive, not only that you see here, but when you go onto the website, you'll see uh, fugitives in total. You can contact the marshals at 1-877-926-8332. And again, thank you all for your time. Thank you. There are a lot of things that I appreciate about our sheriff. I've mentioned them before, and I'm not going to necessarily duplicate it here. Um, other than to say this, our incoming mayor has spoken at length about it being one Philly, about everyone collaborating, everyone working together. Well, that has never been a problem with Sheriff Bilal. Sheriff Bilal has always been ready to work with criminal justice partners to get the job done. And that's why we have seen you together so many times in relation to this and other matters. Uh, another thing I appreciate, which I perhaps haven't spoken about in the past, is that I don't know that there's anyone better at communicating to everyone why it is so important for these fugitives to be turned in for the sake of public safety, for the sake of the survivors, because of what they, the harm that they did to victims, but also for the sake of law enforcement. So they're not placed into a dangerous situation of chasing down somebody who is potentially facing a life sentence and has already established that they're willing to do incredibly violent things. Finally, you may be saving the life of the defendant because we all know that in a superheated pursuit of a fugitive, things can happen. And any certain kinds of efforts will be met lawfully with justified force. So there's so many good reasons to do that. But I also want to, um, Sheriff will be up here in just one second, but I also want to point out, I think Lieutenant Marshmont raises uh, an incredibly good point, which is there are empty chairs at holiday tables and those empty chairs belong to people who were killed. It's not, just the fact that some of the people who are wanted are going to be coming around because that is what happens at the holidays. People come around, they come around to familiar places, they come around to their family, they come around to familiar faces. It's that we should also be mindful of that empty chair. And that is something that we can all accomplish together this holiday season to make sure that the people who are at the table with the empty chair know that we are trying to help them as well. It's my pleasure to call forward Sheriff Rochelle Paval. Good morning. Let me reiterate these numbers so people can hear this. To date, there have been 394 homicides in 2023. Though we say a 19% decrease from 2022, they still are happening. Since the inception of the DA Krasnus Most Wanted Fugitive series, we have seen an increase in participation with the public at large, which we desperately need, in providing tips on the whereabouts of the fugitives. I want to thank and encourage our public to continue to work with law enforcement as we work together to decrease violence and crime in our city. This has been a collaborative effort. DA's office, Philadelphia Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, and every law enforcement entity in this city and state. But we are posting these pictures to let those who may know them turn them in. And some of you may not even knew that they were wanted. But after the day, you know they do. You know that they are wanted and they are violent individuals and if they are in your house, you need to turn them in. Everybody has to play a part here. No agency, no department can do this by themselves. No one. 
So if we work together, those that are harming our communities, our families, we can get them off the street. And just maybe this holiday will be a better holiday for a whole lot of people. Police department, do not shut down on Christmas Day. No New Year's. Sheriff department, do not shut down. My warrant unit, do not shut down on Christmas or New Year's. They'll be working. Call in a tip, call in some information, let us know. Just note in January of 2024, the sheriff will announce its own warrant page on phillysheriff.com for you to easily put tips in so that we can go out and get these people off our streets. For families who may be celebrating the holiday, the one thing you don't want, you don't want the smoke up in your house. You don't want us coming here the day you are celebrating. You don't want us there. So it's best that you turn them in so that we can get them off the streets now. And you can have a festive holiday because then we won't be coming. You've already turned them in. Thank you.